Welcome to Big Idea Investing. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So does this San Diego-based company that was founded in 2003 and went public in late 2018 still have room to run after eclipsing a $3.5 billion market cap with only $8 million in expected full year 2020 sales revenue? This, by the way, makes for a price to sales ratio of 437, where the average biotech stock trades at around eight times sales. But I will tell you right now, BioNano has a revolutionary product and software stack that is going to blow up the cytogenetics market, which is set to be valued at $3 billion in the next few years. This space, by the way, is set to grow at around 10% a year, of which BioNano is primed to capture a huge percentage of with proper execution. Even if they capture half of that market at a normal eight times price to sales ratio, that would give BioNano a $12 billion valuation or three to four times higher than today's valuation. And as of the recording of this episode, BioNano is down almost $4 from its 52-week high, which was just last week at $15.69. So is this a new great long-term entry point? We're covering a lot of information today to help us answer this question. The timestamps are below. BioNano Genomics ticker BNGO lost $29 million in 2019, and in their most recent 10K for 2019, they said, quote, we cannot predict if we will achieve sustained profitability in the near future or at all. We expect that losses will continue for the foreseeable future, end quote. And one thing most other YouTube videos and articles completely sleep on is BioNano's applications in the agricultural genomic space where they already have customers who are understanding how structural variations, or SVs, impact plants and animals. And yes, BioNano Genomics has applications identifying large SVs with clinical significance in COVID-19, which means they are in the running to receive government funding in the near term, which would of course expedite the research process that would be a huge boost to the stock in the near term. But this is an investment channel, not a trading channel, so we need to go much deeper than just the headlines and the short-term news cycle. BioNano briefly traded above $8 a share after their IPO in late 2018, but then fell down to below $1 a share, and they were at risk of being delisted from the NASDAQ until they were recently granted a 180-day extension on December 30th of 2020. They have since satisfied that extension, meaning they had to close above $1 per share for 10 days in a row, so that's no longer a concern, but they were on the brink of disaster just a few weeks ago. At IPO, there were only 7 million shares issued, but as of today, there are 271 million shares outstanding and an available float of 151 million. So there was some real share dilution, which did play a big role in depressing share prices over the course of 2019. And real quick, if you're new, what BioNano is doing should be viewed as complementary to what Pacific Biosciences or PacBio is doing, but more on that later. As of the latest reporting, BioNano delivered 104 Sapphire devices globally, having started deliveries in February of 2017. They have a direct sales force in North America and Europe and use distribution partners in Asia Pacific. From here on out, I will refer to BioNano Genomics sometimes as Bingo. Their customers include the Boston Children's Hospital, the Mayo Clinic, Icon School of Medicine, the National Cancer Institute, and National Institutes of Health, some of the most prestigious names in the industry. BioNano's products are designated RUO or research use only, meaning the products are not subject to FDA approval. But it's different for some of their clients like Praxis Genomics who got the first FDA approval to use Sapphire to develop LDTs or laboratory developed tests. Bingo has 65 issued patents and many more in the pipeline, making for a robust IP portfolio around their system software and devices. Everyone on their senior your management team also has over 20 years of industry experience. There are over 280 papers published to date using Sapphire data and 80 of them were published in 2019 alone. The company was focused on their Sapphire device sales, but they had much lower gross margins here compared to their consumables product, the chips that are used per sample, which have much higher gross margins. In its most recent 10K covering 2019, Bingo said its market should allow them to sell 9,500 Sapphire systems, generating 2.1 $1 billion in revenue, and this is expected to grow at 15% per year. In addition to these Sapphire device sales, Bingo can drive recurring revenue from the consumable chips used to operate the system, generating between $60,000 and $150,000 per year per device. This implies a potential annual recurring revenue of between $600 million and $1.4 billion per year, and Bingo said its addressable portion of the genome analysis market was $2.7 to $3.5 billion. Now for the good stuff. 
stuff. If you want to find winners in the biotech and genomic space, you need to understand the next few minutes of education. It is also incredibly interesting, so grab a coffee and enjoy. In 1953, humans learned about the structure of DNA and that it carried important biological information. Then about 50 years later, the first full human genome was sequenced. But what does that even mean? Well, here is a visual representation for you. This is the genome of a human printed page by page, letter by letter, 262,000 pages of information. This right here is the code of life, and now we can look inside these books and you see millions of letters, the sequence of which can tell us the color of our eyes, our susceptibility to disease, and an enormous amount of other information. In some cases, if even two letters are missing in a certain position, two out of three billion, that individual would have cystic fibrosis, and it's just two letters of difference. And what's incredible is that it's only one half of one book that gives every single human our individuality and makes up for our differences. The rest is exactly the same. 500 pages is the miracle of life that you and I are. We are much more alike than we think. So genomics at large is the research of these books and pages and trying to make sense of the billions of letters of code or DNA. DNA is a double helix and RNA is a single helix. Both are made up of nucleotides. Think of DNA like a ladder where the steps or the rungs are the bases or the base pairs. DNA molecules are really long but they're coiled into the nucleus of cells in what we call chromosomes and each chromosome has one DNA molecule. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 total, 23 from mom and 23 from dad. Basically the cells of our body use sections of the sequence of DNA, these sections are what we call genes, as instructions on how and when to make proteins and other molecular information. Differences in these genes are called variations, which change the product our genes make, or in some cases stops the product being made altogether, which of course would lead to diseases and other problems. Enter BioNano and their Sapphire system to help us make sense of all of this information by finding structural variants better than anyone else in the industry right now. The two main segments of global genomics are sequencing and cytogenetics, making up a market size of about $23 billion annually, which is growing at about 10% per year. Both long and short read sequencing are limited due to their inability to identify structural variations, which is what Bingo does incredibly well, so Bingo can actually complement companies like PacBio and Illumina by filling in gaps where those companies' technologies fall short. Even with long read sequencing from PacBio, those systems provide average read lengths in the tens of thousands of base pairs, but these lengths are still not long enough to comprehensively and reliably detect structural variations as you need hundreds of thousands thousands of base pairs in length. My favorite way to understand the complementary nature of these companies is to look at a stained glass window. Genome sequencing is zoomed all the way in, reading and understanding each individual piece or individual letter of DNA, whereas optical mapping, what Bingo does, zooms out and gives us for the first time the ability to see the entire picture, the high level view, to spot structural variations that sequencing as of today cannot find. The second part of the market is cytogenetics, which simply put is a very outdated, slow and expensive way that we have been using to date to find these structural variations. The actual techniques are called karyotyping, fish and microarrays. These three methods and techniques called cytogenetics are cumbersome and have a limited ability to scale. Sapphire truly is set to completely disrupt this segment by enabling diagnostic calls or basically diagnosing without the need for sequencing or any cytogenetic technology. But the huge question here, is there enough of an addressable market to make even the most disruptive and impressive technology a worthy long-term investment? To answer this, we of course need to understand how bio-nanogenomics does what they do. First, they isolate DNA with their proprietary preparation method where they don't break or disrupt the DNA like sequencing, which is later put back together with algorithms. Bingo keeps the DNA intact and then they label it at specific sequence motifs with a staining method and they then linearize the DNA in nanochannel arrays or lines with their custom sapphire chip. There is uniform stretching and no coiling which allows them to photograph these arrays or just lines of DNA. Next, the molecules are cycled and imaged and they can sample up to 12 genomes per day or 84 per week at a cost of about $500 per sample which is dramatically cheaper than other cytogenetic methods. Once they have raw images, their custom software extracts digital information and they align the molecules to a reference molecule to then 
find overlaps and they analyze the spacing, etc. And this system can recognize whether the data is from a human or a tomato. And their web-based software solutions and proprietary algorithms then assemble genome maps and database information to process the images and dive into the data at a very granular level with an easy to use interface. And one specific type of structural variation and inversion, these are incredibly hard to detect with sequencing and Bingo does this incredibly well. A research study published in Nature Communications showed that Bingo found 8.5 times more insertions and 35% more deletions than Illumina and the 1000 Genomes Project with older Bingo technology. And another here, if you look at the baby blue parts, those are the structural variations only found by BioNano that were missed by sequencing and other methods. This half circle, by the way, ranges from 500 base pairs to 1 megabase or 1 million base pairs. And just FYI, a kilobase pair or KBP is 1,000 base pairs. BioNano Genomics is also making waves in the cancer research field as a paper from the Garvin Institute shows that variations missed by Illumina data not detected by any algorithm were picked up by Sapphire and they also found 85 large insertions or deletions and only 11% of those were found with next-gen sequencing for prostate cancer. And this also applies to lymphoma and other cancers where karyotyping and other cytogenetic methods do not pick up these structural variations where finding them can give us new insight into how treatment and therapy may change outcomes. In addition to this, Bingo can locate other genes that have not been known to be associated with cancer, but they do have recurring structural variations which will allow for the discovery of new biomarkers and enormous potential identifying new genes with clinical value. And when it comes to rare variation detection, they have 90% sensitivity to detect each different type of SV at 5% allele fractions, which just means even if only 10% of cells in a tumor have an SV, they can still detect it. No one else in the industry can do this at all, and Bingo can do it for about $500 in just a few days. And high sensitivity just means the test does a good job of correctly identifying individuals infected with the disease or variation in question. So to wrap this up, we are about to witness a cytogenetics revolution, and some in the industry think the traditional cytogenetic methods can be replaced in as little as one to two years. With BioNano, detecting these hard to find structural variations from all different types of cancer and having the ability to evaluate the results with intuitive software offering an enormous amount of information, researchers can easily and efficiently dig into the results to come up with new insight. Bingo has also partnered with Genoic software to help improve the detection of structural variants as well. Going from a small blood sample to data in a few days for a few hundred dollars is a revolutionary technology that is here to stay in my opinion. Now I have not yet initiated a position in BioNanoGenomics, but it is squarely on my watch list and honestly I'm hoping for an earnings missed here for first quarter results that we should have sometime around March 9th. This would allow for a potentially better entry point and more importantly more clarification on their business strategy moving forward. And personally I also want to review their 10k for 2020 that we will hopefully get sometime in March to see how things have been progressed. And remember, despite their valuations being pretty high right now, the market has not been trading on fundamentals for some time, and in the biotech space especially, it's an environment where future prospects are priced in years into the future. But as an investor who likes to deploy capital into investments I can feel good about, supporting a better world for future generations, paired with a new industry poised for big growth this decade, I do see myself most likely investing in this company for the next 3-5 to five years, at a minimum barring anything unforeseen in their new 10k. But I would love to hear what you guys think about this company as they try to generate this market that hasn't really existed yet. How do you feel about the upside? What type of market cap do you think they should have? Please let me know your thoughts below. I would love to hear them. But thank you guys for watching. Please like this video if you learned something new. Consider subscribing for more investing content and I hope to see you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day.